Hello everyone and welcome back to Humble Acres. My name is Jordan. Today we are going to be rebuilding slash converting a front axle to the FJ40 over here. So this is what I have here. So this is an original drum brake um, front axle. And this is one of the parts that I got from that um, big lot of parts that I bought. And this is exactly how I got it. One of the sides was taken off. I actually have another one that's completely broke down, but the guy said that there was some type of issue with it and that's why he was starting to tear apart this one. I think I have everything I need to convert this from drum brakes to disc brakes. Um, I was trying to kind of piece everything together there, make sure those worked, but I have the front knuckle part that has the bracket for the calipers. I have the discs, I have the backing plates, I have the correct hubs that they actually already painted for me, so that's great. Um, I have the spindle here that should be correct, and I have a ton of shims. I think these are the shims that came off this, but we're probably going to have to redo that. Um, these are the bottom parts. So it's, yeah. I, oh yeah, we have the correct axles as well here. Um, let's see, we have the calipers here. We have uh, brake pads. Here's the steering linkages on for the top. We have new brake hoses. So I have purchased a couple things, but I will tell you what I purchased. Everything so far has been already here. So there's these um, drive hubs. These are aftermarket and you're actually supposed to drill and put pins in for them. They're supposed to be like stronger. So we'll be using those. Um, we have the four bearings for the top and bottom of this. Um, we have, I think we actually have two sets of seals. I don't, I think one of these is for actually the drums and then one's for discs. So we'll have to figure out which one is that. We have some, more seal things, we have our lock washer thingies, more seals, more seals. We have some new shims. Um, these are the hub seals. So here's a couple of the things I bought. So the nuts for these spindles were not included on here. So I actually, I do have the nuts here, but they're too small to actually fit on here. So I ordered some new ones. These were five bucks a piece, but that'll be fine. And then also the thrust washers. I have one of those, but these are also too small for that spindle. The brake disc spindle apparently um, is a little larger. So I got those. And then I also got the uh, snap rings for these axles as well. That's pretty much everything. Oh, I did order new bearings, wheel bearings, but those aren't here yet. So hopefully they'll be here soon. But that's really the only thing I'm waiting for. We need to take this apart. And unfortunately, we won't be able to use these uh, locking, unlocking hubs on here because the spline in here is actually the uh, old style six spline and the new axles are a much they have like, I forget how many spines, like 32 or something, but so yeah, we won't be able to use these hubs. So I will probably sell these. I probably won't use them at all. So we have a set of those and they seem to work just fine. So you can also see, I've been doing some things with the parts one and this one here. I uh, kind of tore apart the front of this a little bit, as you can see, and I was gonna move it over to this one but I actually decided against that and I'm gonna do something different, but I'll explain that in the other video that is coming. So yeah, these tend to, you can tell when they're wore out because like it's kind of stuck to the middle. You can see it kind of bounces back to the center position and it takes a little bit of force to get past that. So you can see if I push it, it like wants to like spring into that spot there. That's how you know the bearings are probably wore out because they get a little bit of a groove built into them. Looks like there's kind of a uh, wheel spacer on here. So. There we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not factory. I think technically this should just use this drum should come off, but Definitely loose. There we go. It's just very tight on there. Ugh. Got it. I really shouldn't need to take any of that stuff off. I think we just need to take this hub off now. And then that should reveal the big lock uh, nuts underneath there. Nope, nope that won't fit in there. Oh, those are loose. Yeah, has somebody had this off already? Because these aren't even tight. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's all right. Just makes it that much easier for me. I guess I should have known because like every other one is missing. All right, this should just come off. Or not. I bet you there is a... Uh, one of those lock washer things or a spring pin or something in the end that we have to take off. So we need to get an Allen wrench and take all six of those bolts out. It is a three. All right, let's take this cap off now. Well, I don't know if I really need to do this or not, but off now. Okay. I don't know if that was necessary or not. Yeah, I can't see in there at all. All right, see much better now. Um, yes, there is a pin or one of those rings on there. So yeah, and. Uh, can you see that? You probably can. So yeah, there is one of those pins. That light is almost too bright. There. A little dimmer there. So yeah, you can see right on the end there, there's a little, uh, I can't, snap ring? Yeah, snap ring. There's a snap ring on there. I, I kept forgetting what it was called, but okay. So there's a snap ring on there that we have to take off. This is probably a great time to talk about this light. So I was contacted by this company and they wanted to send me this out to review. Um, I wanted to make sure that I could give my honest opinion and they wouldn't like edit anything out and they said they were fine with me just telling how I liked it. So this is how it is. So my honest opinion about this is I really like the light. This is the new color that they're trying to promote right now. And this is actually my favorite color that comes in this flashlight. Um, I like that it has a powerful magnet on the bottom of it because that's one of the features I use the most. It does come with a head strap right here, but I don't tend to use these as much, even though it's nice that it comes with it. Um, I like the magnet mount much more. And then I, the other thing that I really like is when you turn it on, you can press and hold and it goes through the different brightnesses and then you just let go and it stays on that and then if you press the button turns off press it again it comes back on to whatever light it was set at which is a really nice feature my old milwaukee over here does not do that you press it goes on full bright press it again it's dim and then press it again it's off you have to cycle through them which is annoying and it was really good timing because my Milwaukee one just broke. I dropped it from two feet off the floor and the whole thing's made of plastic, of course. And the whole top broke off, which held all the magnets in. So it just broke, I believe it was yesterday or the day before. I don't even remember. I was working on the FJs over there and it fell and broke. So I pretty much can't use this except for just a flashlight that I'm holding, which is pretty useless to me, honestly. So... Yeah, it's, it's just a great light. I really like it, and it was perfect one for me, honestly. So I'm glad that's the one they wanted to send me, because that's probably the one I would have picked. Anyway, I have an affiliate link down in the description. You can click to go look at their store and see what they have. 
This flashlight will actually be on sale from when this video is posted live for the next two days, I believe. And it get you can get up to 40% off, and then I have a code that you can type in, ACRES4, and you can get 10% off as well. So go check out their store, look around, see if you like any of the things. If you do, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. So yeah, thank you Olight, and let's get back to fixing this axle. All right, let's get this snap ring out of here. I don't actually have the right uh, snap ring pliers for this, unfortunately. So we're going to make do with what I have here. It can be kind of a pain when you don't have the flat tip ones. All I have is the round ones. And they don't like to work because these ends are tapered. And yeah. All right, let's start it off. I'm gonna get a screwdriver. I'm actually gonna try the hood strip for this flashlight because I need both of my hands. All right, this headlamp actually works really good. Huh, who would have thought? There we go. Got that snap ring out. I have to clean that up. Now, I think we should be able to pull this off. So let's try. Oh yeah, just pops right off of there. Who would have thunk? Alright, I'm gonna put this back together so we don't lose any of this stuff. That's good to go. I'm actually gonna put these screws back in here too because I'm not gonna use this. So that's the nut there. We gotta get that off of there. And we also have to bend these back. Yep. <laughs> this is a 50 millimeter and should go on that one so that's right first we gotta get these little retainer clip things bent back There we go. That one's flat, that one's flat, that one's good. All right, that should be cleared up now. Now let's see if it'll loosen. There we go. Perfect. Okay, first one off. Now we should be able to get that lock off there. Hopefully. Maybe. There we go. Got that. And then we can get the next nut. So. These threads seem like they're a little messed up. Luckily, we're not going to be reusing any of this stuff. That's off, and I think the hub will come off now. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, there we go. That outer bearing's coming off with it, and the inner bearing also came off with it because of the seal in there. So, and then you have your thrust washer in there as well, and then yeah, both the bearings just stayed in there. Kind of curious. Those bearings actually don't seem too bad. There's a lot of grease in there, which is a good sign. So, Next thing we have to do, we're not going to be using this backing plate, these brakes, these wheel cylinders. None of this we're going to be reusing. So I'm not even going to bother taking any of this stuff off. So what we need to do next is take these bolts off of here. And we need to clean them up a little bit because they're disgusting. Wire brush here and just brush over it real quick. Make quick work of most of it anyway. And then these are probably all like a 12. Yes, I'm gonna get a 12 socket. And we gotta cut all these wires as well. Let's cut all of these wires here, make it a little easier to get them out. I guess I could just do that as well.
comes off pretty easily. Done. Now, I'm just gonna use the little impact driver here. And just zip all these off real quick. And these I'm gonna keep because we'll probably will reuse these bolts. Now we should be able to pull this whole thing off. Hopefully. I did something right. Oh, we got the brake line on here too. Um, we're not going to use that, so I think I'm just going to cut that. We'll just try a good old hacksaw. See how that goes. Perfect. <laughs> it should be good now. I might need to give it a little tap or something too, though. There we go. Perfect. We won't need any of that. I'll probably resell all these parts. So if you guys are interested in any of this drum brake stuff, let me know. Because I probably won't be using it. Alright, next we got to get this off of here. The spindle. Let's use a punch on the back side here. There's not really room. We might need to spin it. Hit it here. in good condition there's definitely some uh, bushing wear in there you can see all that shiny gold in there that's the brass bushings getting worn it's probably somewhat normal <laughs> they don't look like they have any abnormal wear so I'd say everything looks normal in here so yeah looking good don't need that either And this axle shaft we also don't need. And we also don't need this. We pretty much don't need any of this stuff. I mean, the only thing we would use off of here is this steering link right here. But I have other ones that are painted, so we probably won't even be using that. So, All right, the next now we are going to take the axle out. We gotta figure out where the... There should be a flat spot somewhere. There, maybe. Look in here. Yep, flat spot's there. So we should be able to pull this off. There we go. Short side axle. But that looks like it's in really good condition, so we'll definitely be saving that. So it's probably one of the most messy jobs you can do. <laughs> there is just so much grease and oil. So yeah, we gotta wipe all this out and then we still have to take off the top and bottom bearing joint things there for the steering, that part. <laughs> so much. Ugh. Zip these off real quick. Alright, all of those are out now, so now we just gotta deal with the cone washer things. So I went out and bought this brass drift set, punch set basically. I don't know why they're called a drift honestly, but we're gonna use this so we don't damage anything. Maybe I'll we'll take one of the smaller ones and just give it a little tap. Oh, that actually worked really well. Because they have a little uh, space in them. A little gap here I'll show you they have a little cut in them so if you can tap on the side of them it kind of springs them together just find out where the gap it or the little yeah the little gap is on them and then hit the side persistence is key all right that's out that means this should come off or not. <laughs> 
the bearing is stuck on the little centerpiece that is supposed to come out and the bearing can't make it all the way through this outside housing and I'm pretty sure that's what's uh, preventing it from coming off. So um, yeah, I don't have any idea how to fix that. That's insane. Why is that sticking on there? Yeah, it's like tight on there now. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to do. I will be back when I figure out how to get this off of here. So of course, right after I turned the camera off, <laughs> I just, I put my crowbar in here and hammered on it and it popped out. So, yeah, I got it out. But the bearing was definitely stuck on this little pin here. But now it's loose in there. And, yeah, we should be good. I think I can pull this out now. Maybe. Oh, I didn't get the seals off the back yet. That's why. We gotta get those off first. Alright, so back here we gotta get all of these bolts off here and get all these gaskets separated. Looks like that's a 12 millimeter. Let's take off as many as we can. Nope, that is a 10. Let's get as many off with this as we can. These we're gonna wanna save too. So now, these metal discs we got new ones of so we don't need those. Oh wow, there's a lot of rust behind that. So those are garbage. The top and bottom here. So both of these metal things we get replacements of. And then there's a felt gasket right here. And we got a replacement of that. So you just rip that in half, get it off there. And then you got a rubber gasket here, which is also garbage, but that one's on there good. And then there's a metal one it also gets replaced and it's a split so you can just kind of bend it around here or it's obviously a lot easier to wait till you get that off but that's done so now we should be able to take this off hopefully hold this bearing up on the bottom and then the bottom should come out and then lift the top off and bam we got it off bearing fell out the bottom here so Yep, all that we're not going to use. Now we can get this off here. Just kind of split it, pull it around. It's garbage, and then we got this, which is also garbage. And we're good to go. Just got to clean all this up now. Hopefully it's in good shape. We'll have to shine it up and buff it and make sure it's looking good. There's a little bit of pitting and stuff, but we'll shine it up as good as we can and it will do. So we're not still not done yet. We need to get these top and bottom bearing races off still, which should be fairly simple to do, honestly. Toyota was smart about putting those on and how to remove them. And then we also have this inner um, seal we gotta get out as well. All right, so to get these races off of here, just take a punch and Toyota put these little notches in here on either side of the race on the inside on the top and bottom so what you do is you stick your punch down through the inside into that little notch and then hammer go back and forth and it eventually will fall out And smash your finger <laughs> but yep got that out easy enough and then we just do the same on the top one just upside down this time there we go we have this uh, seal in here we have to take off so I actually bought another new tool for that this is something that I have needed for a while anyway, is a seal puller. So I'll just put this in here and pry it out. Okay. Maybe to use the longer one. Yep. 
think it's coming. There we go. Easy as that. And now that's out. And now we can clean that up a little bit. And we should be good to go to put this side back together now. All right, right now I'm just trying to find the parts that I need to put this back together. I believe this is the right hub. This is the right side of the front. And this has an R on it, so I'm assuming that means the right side. So I believe this is the right knuckle, I guess you'd call it. And then this is the spindle. The spindles are the same for both sides, I think. <laughs> so this should be the correct one. And they already painted all these. It's a little dirty. So yeah, they already painted all these. So with a good little wipe down there, you can see it looks like brand new. And then yeah, they did the same with this. It is all painted already. So they just saved me some time there. So thank you for doing that. The axle we're going to paint, but I'm going to do it after um, we get all put back together because, I mean, all this stuff isn't going to matter for painting this. So we got to leave a gap here anyway because the sweeper needs to have a shiny surface. So I believe this is the correct thing. I did notice they didn't take the uh, inner races out of the, the hub here. So I'm going to knock those out real quick. It's the same as doing the races in here. They have... Uh, some little notches in there. So I'm going to just tap those out with the brass uh, punches here real quick. And then we should be good to go to get start putting this back together. Let's work on shining this up a little bit as best we can anyway. Um, the pitting's not great, but it's what we got to work with. It's better than the other axles I have, so we're just going to go with it and hopefully it will be okay. I have this emery cloth. I think that's how you pronounce it. Emery cloth or memory cloth, something like that. But this is actually a really high grit, so I'm going to try using some of that. I think that'll actually work really good. Yeah, that's actually working really well. You can see it's starting to shine that up a little bit. So I'll just keep doing that. So my local hardware store actually had this uh, polishing pad here. It's just kind of like a, a scotch Bright pad, but should help a lot with polishing this up. So I'm gonna use this, polish this up. Hopefully that'll get a little smoother. It's actually pretty smooth now after that sanding, but this'll do a lot faster work of it and make it look good. That is doing a good job. I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll start putting it back together. Well, I think that's pretty much as good as it's gonna get. Uh, you can see there's still some pity in here. I'm not gonna be able to get that out, but it's smooth and it's polished up really nice. It's looking good, so we are gonna go with that. I think that is gonna work out just fine. So we have our new axle seal in here, the inner axle seal. So I just found a socket that fits on here, right? And so we're just gonna tap it in there. Easy as that. Got it started on there. Going to just put this socket over the outside and then just tap it on there. Yeah, yeah it's on. All right, I think now we're going to get the gaskets on the back side here before we put these races in because the races can kind of hold them up a little bit. The only thing is I have two of these and I don't know which one is for which. They might, they're actually probably both exactly the same. Yeah, they're probably both exactly the same. This one has hub seals in it too. So I think I'm gonna go with this one and I'll just have, oh, this one has hub seals in it too. These are probably both exactly the same, honestly. We're gonna pick this one and it's probably gonna be the wrong one. <laughs> But we got new shims, and we have the wiper seal, we have a bunch of gaskets, we have the hub gaskets, we have our rubber seal, two of those, and then we have two felt seals. So, I mean, everything looks fine, so hopefully it'll work. <laughs> so, here's our new metal ring and the new metal retainers for the back, so 
should have everything. So let's get this all started on here. So the first thing that we have to put on is our felt. And it looks like they can go either direction. So just stretch that on over here a little bit. Like so, and then we need to put the rubber gasket on. Like so, and then we need to put our metal ring on. Like that, just bend it back a little bit. Perfect. So those are on there. That's all we need to worry about. Now we can get everything else pressed in here and keep going. All right, here's our new bearings for the top and bottom. I hope these are the right ones. I assume they are. They were in all the other stuff already, so nice new bearing. Don't need that part right now. So this, we just need to press right into there and then we gotta do the bottom one as well. So let's get that in. What I'm doing is I just got a socket big enough to sit on top of here like that. And then I'm gonna put my extension in backwards. So that way I can set this on here and then tap on the top of it. So it'll go in straight. Hopefully, Let's see how this works. Not getting it straight. Okay, well, I messed that up already, so perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's take this out. I gotta pound it in. All right, that one is on. Perfect. Now we just gotta do the other one. And it's in. Perfect. Very nice. Now that we got that, we should be able to pack these bearings now. This is the EP Molly Grease, and it has to be the, uh, where does it say it? it? Has to be the NLGI number two grease, so make sure it's that. And this, is what's going to be packed in this whole cavity here so this is what's used on these bearings the the bearings that go on the spindle the wheel bearings those are actually those that use wheel bearing grease so it's a different grease but it's a whole different area so i'm going to pack these bearings with this grease and then we will get this put together all right that one is packed <laughs> really good so i'm just going to lay this one back down here on this paper towel while we wait for getting this hub back on. And now that my hands are all greasy, it'll be perfect. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pick it up from the inside and we're gonna set the top on first. And then we need to take this bearing and set it in here and then swing that down. So that'll kind of hold it in there. And then we need to get the little things that go on there, but I need to clean my hands off first. Um, I am going to copy the amount of shims. We're probably gonna have to take this back off because this is all new, so it will probably be kind of a pain, but I'm gonna copy the shims that were on there from the old one, and we're just gonna go from there. So. On the old one on the top, it looks like we had two shims of different thicknesses. So I'm going to find two shims from these that are about the same. So these two equal that one. So we're gonna use those. Oh, those are not right. Okay, these are not the right shims. Luckily, I do have other shims over there already. They're not even in that other kit or anything either. These are just different shims. So I'm just gonna use these and we're gonna try to match the ones that were there. So, which the top and bottom are supposed to be the same, but they weren't. I think I'm just gonna do a very thick shim and a thin one on each for the new ones. So I'm gonna do this on top and bottom, they'll be the same, but that way we should 
be able to make something work here. So let's try this and then we'll try these ones on the bottom and then we'll have these extra if we need to change them or something, which is possible. We will have to see. All right, so let's get this freshly painted arm on here. The bearing's in there, so we just have to line up everything. So I have these original instructions from Toyota and it just says to install it over it and then tighten them to 43 to 54.3 foot, pound, foot pounds of torque. So they should just slip on there. I haven't experienced that working, but apparently that's what's supposed to work. So we are just going to do it and hope and pray that it's correct, I suppose. All right, let's just tap on it because apparently... I mean, it's working, so I suppose that's where we're gonna go with. If I have to take these back off to switch these shims though, it's gonna be a huge pain in the butt. So let's hope and pray we get it right the first time. I don't know how it's gonna be possible. But... All right, they're on enough to where I can put the bolts on the top and bottom now and uh, get this to work. So let's get the nuts on here and start tightening it down. All right, I have all my nuts and bolts in here. I let them set in the parts washer for a little bit so they clean them up a little bit. Sitting in there. So now I'm just gonna get a nut, a cone washer, and there's a lock washer for each one. So I'll put the cone washer on, a lock washer, and a nut, and then we will run these down. And we're gonna do two on each to run them down all the way to make sure they're seating right. All right, so I decided I'm gonna go 40, uh, what do I got, 48 foot-pounds on these. All right, and we gotta do the bottom. Same way. All right, so that's it tightened. Measure the knuckle bearing preload. So now we have to measure that. So that's what this little tool here is. You put something on here and pull, and then it tells you how many pounds it takes. And it's supposed to be between 3.9 and five pounds of force. So we'll hook that in there, and then we'll pull on here. And it's way too much, way too much. It is currently sitting at like 14. <laughs> so that's not great. So I'm gonna take this apart and try to deal with taking it apart and we'll go from there. All right, I took the top one back off and added another thick shim in there because we were pretty far off. So now let's see what this says. We're at about eight pounds, so we still need to add more into this. Apparently, it's just way different than what it was originally. So, I probably should add, because that went from, I think it was like 16 before, so that cut it in half, and I added a thick shim to the top. So if we add like a thin one to the bottom, that would probably, you're supposed to keep them equal, but that's very difficult. Um, so if we add a thin one to the bottom, that would probably bring us down to where we need to be. All right, I finally got the bottom one back off. It was a little tricky, but now hopefully we'll be good. Let's see. We are at four. to four and a half, well, 3.9 to five. So I guess we are on the looser end, but. Yeah, we're definitely over four. Let's try the other direction. It should be the same, but you never know. Yeah, we're over four, we're under five. That's perfect. All right, and they're very similar top and bottom as well. 
The top one has a small and two large, and the bottom one has two small and one large. So very, very similar. So that's done. Let's get the other uh, four torqued down. I only put two on each one. So let's get those torqued down and then test it again. It might get a little tighter maybe, but probably not much. It's torqued again. Let's double check this. It actually did make it slightly tighter, but it is sitting right at four and a half. That's probably the biggest pain in the butt of this whole thing is dealing with these shims, but we are done. So now we need to get the axle in. We have different axles we have to use because the splines on the end are different. These have a ton of splines and the old ones have just these six splines on there. They're quite a bit different. And the other problem is these ones, you can see this one here is fairly rusty. So we need to take that apart. This is actually the one we need for that side. All right, so I'm just gonna try to clean this out. I'm just gonna lay it in here and then just spray a bunch of brake clean on it and see where that gets us. Pretty much full. That's probably as clean as we're gonna get it, honestly. Pretty much what we're gonna do is just grab some grease and start jamming it in there. My goal would be to start on this side and then try to get it to come out the other side. I don't know if that's possible or not. It seems like it's spinning pretty freely at least. Now we're going to shove this in there. Okay. Seal. Got it. I don't know why it was so difficult, but it's in. We need to pack this with pretty much all the rest of this grease needs to go in here because it, it's supposed to be three quarters of the way full of grease. So I bought a tub of these, one for each side. So we're basically just shoving all the grease in there. So here we go. There we go. You do have to leave a little space, like there's a little air bubble at the top for expansion when it gets warm. So that's why it's only supposed to be three quarters of the way full. I believe this is correct. Paper gasket goes on there and the little uh, drain hole thing goes at the bottom. And then we need the spindle. Then we'll put this on here. Oh, gasket fell off of course. Put this on here, line our gasket up about there. And then there's also a little notch at the bottom. So we want to line that up. Oh yeah, duh. I forgot. We need the backing plate and everything too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean this up real quick. I'll be back. I got the backing plate done. Got all painted. And there is actually an R right here on the back. And then on the front, there's a little arrow as well pointing up. So you know which way it goes. So we need to put this gasket on here, the little notch on the bottom. And then we need to put this backing plate on with the arrow pointing up. And then 
it gets a lot of stuff right in here. Then we need to put uh, this on. And then something I also learned is on the brake disc ones, they don't have the holes in the bolts for the safety wire. So, yep. And then you just have to line everything up. There's a hole. Alright. Got one started. Let's see if we can get another one in here. Hey, we got it. Alright. So the reason these had safety wires on the older style, and why they probably should on this, is if these bolts come out, your wheel falls off. <laughs> it's a pretty important thing, but we're just going to torque them down to the spec that they're supposed to be, and we'll go from there. It probably wouldn't hurt to put some Loctite on those, honestly. So both of the books that I saw said these are supposed to be once at 13.5. This one says between 10.9 and 16 foot-pounds. So I'm gonna go 16 because I'd rather them be tighter than looser. So yeah, it seems a little strange to me, but that's what it is. I suppose. There we go. That is done. Now we have the spindle, but the problem with that is we can't do it because I don't have the bearing. It does look like that fits on there, right? So that's how that goes on, but I don't have the bearings yet, so we're gonna have to wait. Uh, so I forgot to uh, actually do the back of this. I gotta put these seals on. So yeah, now we gotta get these on here. So this metal ring goes in first. Just goes in like that. And then the rubber one goes in. That groove with the metal one. It's supposed to just fit in there, which I guess it kind of is, but not really. And then I gotta spin this around until it fits in the right spot. Not there. Not there, there it looks like. And then I need to get this on here. This goes like this. And then I need to have a little screw in here. Try to line this up as best as possible. Like so, get that started. Get this side started. Okay, then we can get this down here, hoping that rubber gasket goes into its spot where it needs to be. Now let's see if I can run them down. Alright. Alright, so now the manuals I have say a torque for those, so we're just going to keep them um, about like that. They touch the metal on there and then torque them a little bit more and they should be good to go. So, all right, that one's pretty much done. I just got to wait for the bearings. I'm going to do the other one off camera. It's going to be the same thing. So see you back when I get the bearings. So to keep from having to edit a lot, I put this side all together. Everything's done except for the caliper and the drive hub. And the reasons for that is I do not have the bolts to bolt the caliper on. And the drive hub that I have, I have several, but the old style will not fit this because the splines are different. And the one that I do have doesn't work either because it's actually not made for a Land Cruiser axle. It's made for a Hilux axle or a Forerunner axle. And apparently they're different because this one is a lot longer than the other ones. So I have these here. They're actually um, a trail gear brand. I guess these are actually upgraded drive hubs, but they just don't work. They, they fit on there and everything fine. I can show you. So they fit on here fine. If I can get it lined up here. So they fit on there fine. The splines are the same, but you can see there is way too much area here 
and like putting the lock washer on is not going to do anything because there's too much spline behind it. This, the dust cap that fits on the end of it doesn't fit either because the shaft sticks out too far. So these aren't going to work, but I'll probably just resell these. They're brand new, um, open package, of course, but everything's there for them. And those brand new are like 200 bucks. So I'll sell those probably like 150 bucks if somebody wants them. So that's what I, that's what I'm going through. I actually ordered brand new Warren locking hubs so you can actually open them and close them or lock them and unlock them. And that'll be really nice. Apparently the, um, the one, the axles with 30 splines didn't come with just a solid locking hub. So yeah, there's no way to get around that, I guess. So I just bought some hubs. I actually found a deal on them on eBay. I think I paid 230 bucks for the set so and they're brand new they were open box though but everything's there except for the gasket which i already have over there so hopefully we'll be good there anyway so i did this one first so i could make sure i just doing everything correct and so hopefully it'll go a little smoother the second time around <laughs> i didn't really actually have too many hiccups but i did realize a couple things anyway so Let's get this side done and I'll show you how to do everything. All right, so next I think I'm going to uh, tap out these bearing races. I'm just gonna set it in there and then tap these out. We get to put the new ones in. Here is, let's see, this is the outer or the inner? This is the inner, the inner one is bigger. So, it goes right there and then I'm just using one of the old races and I just cut a slit in it so I can pound it in there but it won't get stuck where the other one goes so it'll go in but then you can just pull it out because there's a slit in it I actually saw that trick off of a uh, YouTube video so set this on here and then just tap it down all the way until it's seated in there and make sure you have it the right way or else it's going to be a little bit of a pain. <laughs> nice. It's all the way in there now. You can check with your fingernail, make sure there's no gaps in there. And then this one just pulls right back out. So that one's in there good now. Now we'll flip it over and do the other one. All right, so now we need to put the seal on the back. We also need to set the bearing in there too, so that's also important. So here's our bearing. Nice if I didn't have to get all disgusting. Perfect. And I just used uh, high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. I don't know why it says disc brake, but maybe because these get hotter. I don't know, but that's what I used. All right, so that's in there. Um, now we need to put, make sure you put that in first. Now we need to put the seal in, which I have a bunch of seals. I had four of them. Like I said, I had a bunch of kits of these, so I'm going to use this one because it actually looks most like the factory one. It has this lip, whereas the other two are a little bit of a different design on the back. So I'm going to use this one. I'll have two extras if I ever need any. So this sits on like this. So set that on there and then hit that, tap it on. It's actually fairly tight fit. Yeah, you can tell when it bottoms out. So that is in. We're almost done with the pounding. <laughs> Just a little bit more. We need to line the holes up with this drum. And then we need to tap in these wheel studs. So, 
It works great to just use this drum because the studs go right through there and then you can just tap them in. So now that's done, we can put the wheel disc on. So this sets right on here. And then we have a bunch of bolts and lock washers that go right back here. There we go. I think it's time that we can just stick it on there. So now we're gonna pick this up. Oh, we gotta get off the studs there. There we go. Grab it by this side and slide it on there. Like that. All right, so next we need to get the other bearing in here, which I wanna try to pack some grease in there in between the bearings uh, before we do anything else, so. I'm just going to take some of this and try to pack it inside here. So the other bearing is right here. It's all greased up. Might as well use my greasy hand. And slide that on. Well, I can see threads, so we'll put the washer on and then get the nut on and hopefully it'll seat that bearing in there. So here's some new parts I bought. We got the thrust washer here, so that'll go on first. Right there. Just gotta line the groove up. If that kind of made it so I can't get any more on there, so. There we go. There, got the bearing pushed on more, so that's better. I just got grease everywhere. <laughs> All right, so we will put one of these nuts on. Try to not cross thread it, because that would be a nightmare. It's kind of finicky to get these started, but once you get it, there we go. Just once you get grease on a rag, you, you gotta just throw it away, because the second you pick it back up, you get more grease on you. It's a nightmare. All right. Now I got my uh, 54 millimeter socket here. I actually stamped it in the top because as you can see, this is already unreadable basically. So you're supposed to torque this one by hand, which for me is this wrench. They actually, in this, this is the actual Toyota instruction book. They have like a socket with a bar through it. And that's what they say is inner nut by hand. And then you unscrew it an eighth to a sixteenth of a turn. So that's what I'm doing. Just tighten this down. And it actually goes on quite a bit more. It's kind of surprising. So that's pretty much by hand. Eh. Oh, the backing plate's touching somewhere. I'm just gonna get my crowbar and bend it back. Hopefully that works now. Yeah, it's still rubbing a little somewhere. These bag I understand why people get rid of these bagging plates because they're just kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. Nope. Uh, I think it's right there. That's where it was. Now we're hitting somewhere else. How about now? There we go. Alright. So I want to spin that, kind of get the bearing seated in the right spot, and then I tighten it down a little more. Or not. Alright, so now we're going to turn it back an eighth of a turn, or a sixth, or whatever you want to do. Okay, stop. Alright, eighth of a turn, or a sixth, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go a sixth, which is there. Now, kind of just test it. It spins really nice now. Very good. So now we put this lock washer on. Make sure it's clean. Set that right in here. 
Well, that was a great time for the battery to go dead, so fun. All right, so just need to put this last nut on. Yeah, I don't know if it showed me. I got the lock washer on there. So yeah, I put that on. Then we get this nut on. These flies just love me. <laughs> so then we'll tighten that one down and that kind of locks everything on. Oops. And there wasn't a torque for these that I found anyway, which was kind of surprising to me. So, goot and tight it is. Goot and tight. Of course, I got dirt on that, because that's what you do. So yeah, just make this tight. And then test this, feels good. Now we just need to bend these over. <clears throat> so what I do is just pick a couple of them and bend them out. Oh. Like so, and then like this one is also a good one to do. Yep, there's usually two of them that line up about right. So then I will get a little punch and tap them down all the way. Same with this one. Like so. Now it's not going anywhere. And we're pretty much done. As far as we can get anyway. So, yeah. Now the other one matches. We got two of these that are pretty much together now. And we just have to wait for more hubs and stuff. So yeah, that's it. That is the axle converted from drums to discs. And I used all factory Toyota parts on here as well, so it can be done. I actually wasn't even sure if this was possible, switching from an older style drum axle to a newer style. The axle itself and the differential are all the same. It's just the outside components that are all different. So it's pretty cool. And I'm glad I did it because it was quite a bit of a learning experience as well. I mean, all of the parts on the ends are different, so you'll have to make sure you get all new parts, but I mean, it, it'll be nice that it's all factory. And I also got a dual diaphragm brake booster and a master brake cylinder that is for a disc brake system as well. So, that's all going to be swapped into one of the FJs. I'm not going to let you know which one yet, but that'll probably be in the next video or so. It'll be coming out. But that's going to be it. I once again want to say thank you to Olight for uh, sending me that flashlight, and I really enjoyed it. The link's in the description for that sale, and you can go check that out now and for the next two days, I believe. So thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.